Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 70 of Dissonant Waves. Yay! Ah! Oh my exhausted. god, guys, it's episode 70. It's episode 70, guys, it's episode 70! And just matching that excitement, we have three interesting projects to talk about this week. Helping me talk about them, as always, is Ritz and Trex. How are we doing? Yeah. yeah I'm uh, pretty all right. I and, have thought, but otherwise pretty good. And we are now talking about Oscar Lang's Chew the Scenery, Origami Angel's Gami Gang, and the massive Through the Soil compilation by a lot of different people. My choice. I really made everyone just <laughs> hunker down this week. Uh, Through the Soil yeah. was something that I... I... I feel like it's going to be a large talking point, and we're gonna we're gonna have to just take so much time to cover it. But I would I really want to get like one album out of the way because it's just I'm sure it's going to be a universal number three here. Okay. Uh, Trix, would you like to introduce it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Oscar Lang's chewing scenery. Yep. It's not bad, but it is not up to the par that I feel like these other two albums have set. Yes. Yeah. Uh, British emerging pop star Oscar Lang has been, I guess, making the rounds of a few different EPs and self-released things over the last few years. And now we have come to his mm-hmm. bigger label debut, A Chew the Scenery, in which we learn um, that he's pretty good at production, but we don't learn much about him as an artist. So I want to yes. start off Fair enough. Uh, with something that I was kind of discussing with Dominic uh, before we started this podcast, but it's kind of like going to be this major talking point that we have, and it's it's kind of hard that I'm going to be comparing him to this artist when they don't really sound alike, but the vibe is the same, and I feel like the kind of style and production of this, uh, I guess, I guess Oscar Lang probably does a lot more production, but this album, specifically at the start, was giving me a lot of Oliver Tree-style vibes for just how the album was being presented and how the songs were. The biggest difference that really bothers me, and this is why I feel like this album just doesn't get to par, it's really inconsistent. And it shows so much potential of, of being able to go to places like, the reason why I like the Oliver Tree is that it wasn't afraid to do what it wanted to do, and it knew what it was doing there. Right. Plus, Oliver Tree knew slowly how to write a hook. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Oscar Lang does a bit of pop on here as well, so it's not like it's too far stretched to it. And there are moments on this album where he really tries to, to branch out, try these different sounds, and they work when he does it, but he's just too afraid to stick with it. And it does this really kind of inconsistent mess. The ending of headphones when it starts to get into that heavy kind of bass stuff. I know it's a, it's not exactly the freshest sound stuff, but he's working with it well, and it hits so well. And he just goes and does boring acoustic right afterwards. It doesn't flow well into it. It's this pointless intermission. Like the first, the kind of start to this with our feature presentation made it seem like this album was going to be a lot funner than it actually was. And yeah. I have to say that this was an absolutely serious album it's just that not everything was as vibey as it could have been on here there are this the kind of like stretch of yeah the headphones i feel it was like it was this part where i thought this album was going to be uh a lot better than it ended up being like it didn't start off bad i think 21st century hobbies an all right tune it's not yeah. nothing special like the beat is really good like the like the sounds that it has yeah. are pretty interesting but after headphones this album just kind of continues maybe are you happy being the only kind of um standout after that everything else is just kind of forgettable and kind of there which is a shame because this this person's not exactly like there's no fluke in any of these songs that are good he obviously knows what he's doing but he's just too afraid to start working with that and look it it helps when you're not as big i I, I compare to oliver tree like oliver tree was a lot bigger when the time it came out uh to the album so it was a lot easier to get a lot more production onto that and kind of take those risks. It was a lot easier to do that. But, I mean, it's not exactly like it's hard to take risks when you're underground as well, Mm -hmm. because usually you have less uh, studio pressure on you as well. And that's just what frustrates me with this album. Mm -hmm. You know, it could just do a lot more than it it does. It's not to say say that this is a bad album. I wouldn't put this in, like, uh, worst albums or anything, but it's just an album that's there. You probably listen to yeah, and headphones. Like headphones, 
I like the ending of, but like the build up also still took a while to get there. I'll say yeah mm -hmm. is really the only song I would come back to on this. And that was probably the most interesting. But again, that that's that shows that this is someone who could definitely in the future expand into something uh, a lot more, but he's not so, really an artist on my radar right after this album to yeah. be quite frank. So my my first problem with this album really stems from the fact that He's trying to, it feels like he's trying to do a, like a concept album of some sort. Like he has like a feature presentation and intermission, which is like this very filmic movie, like, you know, this is some cohesive presentation thing. And it's going to like be this whole, I don't know, thematic chromatica kind of thing or uh, like any other mm -hmm. album that's kind of like, a, like an arc android kind of thing where everything's supposed to flow together and have this unified feel, I think is what he's going for least in these these couple tracks here but it's like all of this build up for this film presentation doesn't really go anywhere it's just like okay we have this intro song uh gonna prepare you for what's coming up it's gonna be big and then it's just like a bunch of pop songs that are decent and have interesting things going on then we have intermission which is just like yeah see we're gonna we're gonna slow things down and take a break and we'll be right back and it's like why did you need to take a break it, it, it's like it's like giving Led Zeppelin four just like sudden intro and intermission tracks for no reason. What mm. what possibility? Fair enough. I wouldn't really compare this album need. to Led Zeppelin four though. No, I'm just, like I'm just grabbing like a random album in terms of like you don't you don't need this at all. This this is this doesn't belong here in terms of what yeah. you're selling us other than these tracks. Like the thing is, our feature presentation and both and intermission both have some really cool beats and are some of the highlights on their own in terms of just like like intermission is this really cool synth beat that i like our feature presentation is like really drum heavy and kind of you know like a prologue that's like oh shit guys here we go the alarms are going off this is going to be some hot shit coming up right here and then i it's think like, um, yeah. you, you you continue i can hold on to my foot no it's, it's like 21st century hobby is like a cool psychedelic pop tune that has a really cool interesting nostalgic mysterious beat going on and then he himself is like doing a decent job singing over it, but he also just doesn't have like a personality coming across like Oliver Tree does. Like you look at Oliver Tree, you hear Oliver Tree, you kind of get to the songwriting through his behavior, kind of what he's about. Mm. And Oscar Lang yeah. is competent to do those songs, but you never really get that grandiose vibe. You never really get much of a vibe from him at all in terms of okay, he's laughing in the song, but like. There's no, there doesn't really feel like there's that passion. There doesn't really feel like there's that joy to express who he actually is on any level. Mm -hmm. I was um, what I was gonna say as well that I think what's uh, the most interesting thing when you kind of research Oscar Lang is he's actually done a couple collaborations with um, Baba Doobie. Yeah, and they were friends. That's actually yeah, his actual most popular song is a collaboration with this, and I, I kind of find it interesting that yeah, if they're if they're friends here because they're kind of sound completely different to be honest i know i know early baby doobie is a lot more folky and stuff but i mean in this case this doesn't really feel like going towards and i i don't want to always be criticizing stuff like that but that's what i do it, it feels like when it's going into oscar lang versus baby doobie it's not really like oh i'm going to expand my music uh, my music here and incorporate this and in, into when i listen to this type of music it just kind of goes like oh that's kind of cool and then just like never go back to him yeah, because I, I will listen to Baba Doobie quite a lot. I love a lot of Baba Doobie songs, and he like produced a lot of her work before she got signed to that record label. I know that's that was like mm -hmm. his whole thing was like I was her producer, her manager, and then she got signed and she hooked me up. Mm -hmm. I mean, to to be quite frank, she she's getting better and better now. So maybe, may maybe maybe he was holding her back a little bit. And he's at this point in his fame right now where it's still, like, hard to actually research him. Like, a lot of the, this information you might find is on, like, those really cheesy tabloid celebrity websites. Like, I think one of the one of the sites that was, like, a top result was something like adolescent.net, which just sounds bad to go to in general. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, he has super guarded image in terms of, like, there's there's information out there about him. Like kind of his music, it's nothing really too surface, too deep. His his overall presentation in interviews is very much like a goon. He's just here having a fun time. He's just saying fuck a bunch and giving these really cheeky answers. But there's no like, it's hard to get a sense of who he is in a, on a deeper level. Like there's like a just a a black box of a personality there. Yeah. 
Like you hear, like, his mom is some pop star, and you, who, who is she? Who knows? All the Baby Doobie songs, which I think are absolute highlights right now, weren't Oscar Lang. So I can, I can stick, I can stick with my, uh, yeah, she's gotten better with different producers. Why, why did you pick this, Drex? I'm curious. Um, I was going down 2021 album new releases, and I'm like, oh, that that's a cool album. Oh, that sounds pretty cool on first listen. Let's go with that. I mean, this isn't something I'm mad to be covering because it's it again it is cool to always uh, check out artists. Who, in this case, are, are close to other other artists that I listen to and have genuine connections with them. Yeah. Uh, that I haven't heard before. I, it doesn't always pan out. I don't think this album is bad. I don't think it's great. I think it's just kind of there. But uh, these are, these are the type of albums that are fun to listen to, and you never know if they're worth covering. I mean. Again, this is an artist that has a lot of potential. Unfortunately, they are quite a bit deep into this one, so you kind of wonder when that potential finally starts to show. But I mean, Tyler the Creator took took a while until his music was actually fantastic. So you never know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm kind of convinced, like there is some level of just like he needs to drop the persona in a way and just like actually show his colors. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I, I gotta like yeah, I can I can see that. Like with an Oliver Tree, Oliver Tree knows how to act. Yes. So doing doing personas works a lot more. And in here, it's like yeah, but I, I feel like I feel like the most serious like sounding songs in here. Like I think "Write Me a Letter" was the one I'm kind of thinking of. It was just boring, and yes. I, I, that that's the that was the moment where this album kind of fell for me because because headphones comes in and it wasn't always so interesting but it, it it brought out one of my favorite moments of this album i thought okay this is cool and then it just instantly throws that away see i, I like write me a letter though because it felt like that was more of an honest song in terms of it's just him and a piano he has if like the a decent album, melody going on but if the album was more flowing towards that the the, the song would fit fine because the song it's uh, the song itself could fit more on that style of album, but it, this is not the style of album to have it on. You either go with you go with that, or you go full into the persona. And this person just doesn't know how to do either of them, and that's that's what makes this frustrating. It's it's someone who knows what he's doing, but he doesn't know how he could be better. He's interested in exploring different genres, and kind of just we're at a point where musicians are kind of like fuck genre. Let me just do what I like doing. Mm. And he and he talks about in interviews how. You know, he has, like, an EP of dance tunes that he, he'd love to put out. Uh, he has some stuff that he's really passionate about, but it's he's kind of having that identity crisis of, like, is this is this an Oscar Lang thing? You know, is this me? Do I have to put this but, under a different if, name? But if, 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 if Oscar Lang is supposed to be the type of music that you just want to put out, you're just putting out what you want to put out, it doesn't matter if it's an Oscar Lang. There are some artists who, yeah, it has to be... Yeah, you kind of have to have your music uh, tied to what the artist's name is, and well, tied to the name, because it can really be contradictory for a lot of fans because they're really based on that type of sound. But then you have other artists who pretty much go and say, like, you have Daughters. Uh, obviously, the big one is King Gizzard, but uh, there's a band called mm-hmm. Daughters, which their first um, their first mm-hmm. album is pretty much screaming, uh, metalcore, a uh, bit of, like, math. Well, it's kind of mathcore is a better way to describe it. Uh, and it lasts 11 minutes and 10 songs. And then wow. their last proper uh, album was kind of post-punk with a mix of uh, a kind of horror punk as well. Completely different sounding album. It, ten songs, but 50 minutes in length. They had songs in there which were longer than that first album, I think. I maybe, or maybe not. But that that's just... That's, that's a band that pretty much always said, there is no sound to us. We put out what we want to put out, what we think is good. And the the lead singer of that has put out solo material as well. So it's not like they're afraid to do a solo act or anything like that. But it also shows that you don't always have to be tied to a sound. There are, like Radiohead, their albums sound different. Yeah, they reinvent themselves yeah. with every album. Kev- I mean, of Montreal reinvents themselves with every album, pretty much. And I get the kind of personality thing, but if it's if you're just putting out the music you want to put out, then it shouldn't also, also be if that's any your if that's your name. If, if you're just putting your name on your project, isn't that just you? Yeah. So it's like it's just yeah, well, it's just an Oscar Lang thing. Well, it's like well, if you think the music is shit and you don't want to put it out, that's a completely different thing. Like you, no, no artist is, is ever forced to put out their um their album unless you you fucking Kanye, in which stop stop being the blue balls but 
like when this album goes in unexpected directions, I usually got really interested and excited. Like the beginning of Yeah being like this kind of eight bit mm. chip tune kind of thing for like mm. thirty seconds. It was really interesting, and I dug that. And yeah, I'm like, give me more of that. Give me more of that kind of like switch up personality we got going on there. But then it just transitions into like a regular pop song about having a conversation or this interaction with somebody who just says yeah a lot and doesn't seem to care. Like, okay, cool, that's an interesting song idea on itself, but you had this really cool beat, and then you just kind of like snatched it away from us to continue on with this album that has this weird identity crisis happening. Although I, I will say now, that chip tune is actually, mentioning the chip tune's actually got me a, a good idea for what to pick next week. Because uh, I know a, right. an album that uses chip tune perfectly. And you can probably compare that now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like, I think I got, like, when we got to, like, quarter past nine, I felt like we were finally kind of getting closer to that. This is more maybe who Oscar Lang is, maybe. But it, but it took nine songs to really find that groove of just, like, okay, let's let's get a little bit closer. Let's, let's, you know, drop the pretense of this is some concept album. Because he, once the intermission is over, he, he can, kind of just gets rid of all of that stuff. Final Call and Thank You are still... They have the names that they have, but they're not really filmic or like he's not taking a bow literally or anything like that. Mm-hmm. When we get to that point, it's like, OK, there's there's something here, but I just don't like that it took this long to get to it. And plus, also, like, is, is Stuck the song where he just has that fucking uh, song two sample? Uh, I can't remember, to be honest. Like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like, he, like, he just it's just straight up that blur. Whoa, whoa. I don't think you know how blur sounds, to be honest. Like, I can't do the actual the actual thing. It's like... Woohoo! Yeah, that, that thing. And I feel heavy metal. Woohoo! Like, song. he listens to a lot of different stuff, and you can kind of tell, you know, where his influences might lie a little bit for some of that stuff, but I was surprised with how, how that was just similar to that. Damn, you really like blur, I see. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of bored of talking about this album. How are you two feeling? I'm half asleep, so... Yeah, good album. Yeah, I don't know. I liked Half Past Nine. Can't really remember it right now, but that's kind of the problem I have with this album comparatively to, like, the other two. Like, I just didn't want to listen to it all the way through sometimes because it's... Oh, well, the one thing I will say about Quarter Past Nine that I really liked is that's when the strings fucking came out. And then it then it became yeah. like a, they came in like a JRPG boss battle music kind of which I was really intrigued by. That's that's like some like final boss battle like let's get the string section out let's get some violins like just strumming up a storm here like he could write some really cool video game music going on that emotion some but sax some sax and violins yeah but it just wasn't as engaging to listen to as anything else that we listened to this week. Fair enough. Like he, yeah, my favorite was yeah. My least favorite was I already forgot the song. Also, really forgettable. I, one I came complaining about. Write me a letter. I am too asleep to really pick one right now. If I'm gonna be honest, but I kind of just half enjoyed the album. Tricks. How I'll long did it take to? Back to it, but... How long did it take to get through the listening? Because you were listening pretty late here. What was I? Uh, pre- pretty far. Um. Like, I, I was doing, like, some last bit of clean of the last few tracks of Through the Soil before I hopped on. Did you finish? Yeah, I did. Congrats. You got to the end just as we got started. You can now play as Luigi. <laughs> Shall we go into, uh, into a good album now? Should we go well, into my favorites, game? My favorites, least favorites, real quick. Um, I like Write Me oh, a Letter. Yeah. I, I really like ha- Quarter Past Nine. My least favorites, like, I don't know, something off the first half, like Stuck or Yeah, or not the Yeah, but like Stuck, probably. Mm. It just, it was fine. It was all fine, but nothing amazing. Meanwhile. So, Origami Angels Gami Gang. So, here's where I get to claim a little bit of hipster status since uh, Origami Angel have kind of blown up a bit since, since discovering them. Unfortunately, I'm not the reason they blew up. <laughs> One out of two ain't bad. So I discovered them back when they put out their Gen 3 EP, which isn't complete. They weren't completely underground then. It's not like I'm, I'm going to say, oh, they only had five listeners and stuff. But They weren't Weekend Run Club back then. No. Nah. Oh, they were more popular than Weekend Run Club when I discovered them. I'll put, them, uh, put that out there. 
But after that Gen 3 EP, they uh, put out a single 24-hour drive through and then announced that they were going to put out a Crick album uh, before the end of the year, and it was that November 15th, I believe, they put it out in 2019, if I got my dates correctly, and it was one of my favourite albums of 2019. Uh, going back into it now, I, I put it as number 10. With two years of listening to it, it might actually be more closer to top five. I think um, it's an album that's really grown on me on time, and... Since then, they hadn't really put out any new music besides a 2020 EP, which was their songs in Minecraft, which was an interesting kind of remix EP that they put out there. Uh, I believe it was due to a live set that they put out. Uh, oh, because but it, uh, they infamously uh, crashed the servers when their set started. Mm. They get a lot of attention because it's like, oh my god, Origami Angel is so popular, they crashed Minecraft, which wasn't exactly the case. But mm-hmm. they, they kind of took that story and ran with it. But the big thing about that EP was that it had one new song on it, which no one really kind of knew what it was at the time, uh, with Greenbelt Station, uh, which we got our first preview of Gami Gang without quite realizing it with that EP. Earlier this year, they, re- uh, they released two batches of singles, Neutrogena Spectre and Greenbelt Station, mixed together, and... Footloose Cannonball Brothers and Blanket Statement, uh, announcing that Gami Gang would come out as a kind of like a double album, seeming as uh, it's a 20 song album. It's not really the length of a double album, but it's still a 51 minute album. I guess it's kind of seeming as Midwest emo these days, albums are actually kind of short. It's not too surprising. And it is definitely an ambitious uh, project for them to be putting yes. out, seeming as a lot of their. A lot of the other stuff has been a lot shorter. This album has a very, very, and I like a lot of Origami Angel stuff, so it's not new, a very heavy reliance on nostalgia. Yes. But unlike a lot of other artists that try to do it, they succeed really well with doing the stuff. They don't just go and say, I remember this, this is cool and stuff. These are people who genuinely are I grew up with the stuff that they're referencing. Yeah, so did I. And like, very I specific things. Like, there were, there were quotes from a lot of stuff just mixed up in here, but they're all the fucking from... Jimmy Neutron? The Jimmy Neutron at Know You, at the end of No Offense as well, where you have um, Jury from Malcolm in the Middle going, what kind of God makes um, children think when they're not even in school? Yeah, the samples that they have yeah. are really good. <laughs> like the... Uh, the the ending one at GG as well, of if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. Apparently they didn't clear any of this, the samples either. They just used them. Yeah. Which sounds, which sounds about right. That's, that's something for the record label to cancel. I've already got my CD before this fucks up, so... Midwest emo acts don't really clear the samples too well. But this, with this that... This album is fantastic. I don't even mm-hmm. like it as much as Somewhere City, which is why I was surprised that you enjoyed it as much as you did. I still think this is a good album. It's it's potentially going to be in my top 20 at the end of the year, but I guess we'll see. I probably listened uh, to we'll this see. anywhere between 12 and 15 times this week. The fuck? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like this album, but I didn't listen to it that much. I did not get tired of it, surprisingly. <laughs> so, uh... Who uh, you want to? Since you've uh, listened to it this much, you want to talk about the very opening to this album, and uh, I want to. I want to get your first reaction to it. Well, you you kind of mentioned it earlier in the year at some point. I remember you you kind of were talking about how you know this band they they had this trap song that all of a sudden just turns into this emo song like thirty seconds in, and it's so crazy and so stupid. It's like it's great. It was kind of your idea. It was like they just kind of went for it and. It's a, it's like this really Halloweeny, this really like trap beat. Almost sounds kind of like my alarm when I wake up in the morning. And then you just go right into self destruct, and we just got like emo guitar riffs happening. Just this really huge switch up, and it's fantastic. It's really really it's not cool. Even, it's not even the stupidest part of it though. What's the stupidest? The stupidest part? part is that at the end of GG they reuse it, which means the album is a loop. Yeah, they 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 bring it back into the last song. They they incorporate the rhythm. They incorporate the the beat into the guitar part. Even at the end of that, mm. they 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 make this more of a concept album, kind of like a like a full circle album than even Oscar Lang does. I think if this one thing this album does better than Somewhere City, holy fuck, does it flow? It is incredibly flowy. Like songs just switch up so fast and are just so 
instant that you can't even tell half the time where a song ends and another song begins. It just keeps going. Caught in the moment yeah. is two minutes and 18 seconds. All just a song simply about hanging with a friend after school, pretty much. And that song has so many fucking tempo and beat switches in it. It's yeah. insane. And, you'll even, you know, so and then you're not even going to pay cool. attention when Dr. Fondue comes on after that because you're just there. Mm. Like, like, I forget Dr. Fondue exists because, to me, it's just calm the moment and then Bed Bath and Batman Beyond. Mm. Yeah. Like, Dr. Fondue is just so... It's just sequenced so well that it just flows from Caught in the Moment. Like, Caught in the Moment itself is a fucking highlight on this fucking album of many, mm. many great songs. My, my favorite flow in this album, and it, it goes into what's my absolute highlight of this, of this album, uh, is the kind of that second switch from You Won't into Neutrogena Spectre, which, holy fuck, that just hits. Yes. That yeah. also, the, also that to me, it's it's that into Green Belt Station into Bossa Nova Core. They're such different songs, but they this, still this flow is, so well. Yeah, and we're talking about that kind of whole slower moments. This is where a slower moment kind of works. It's a very short kind of acoustic Midwest emo tune, but it works so well. Right. It's kind of like a transition into the next part. Uh, Green Belt Station is the kind of song that Lucas Skokas would cover really well. Uh, Neutrogena Spectre, which is kind of has that kind of whole reference of um of Neutrogena, obviously, as a lot of it kind of um relies on like this literally moments of saying of clear fucking skin as one of the lyrics. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite songs off the album. If I'm gonna be honest, mm. like we I we, and... we've had we've had artists here who have tried to be like really positive in their songwriting and like kind of make really inspirational like positive songs, but this album actually it does it real really well like. Well, it, it doesn't. Spectre. It doesn't fake it. This is a person yeah. who knows. Like he, he mentions that he feels down. He does it. Does it in such an honest way. But it's like, it's not just a guy who's trying to make other people feel better, and it feels honestly. But it's like this music kind of also tries to make him feel better as well. Yeah. Uh, there's a song which I think has uh, done it completely best out of all of this. But I think that goes back to Somewhere City with um with Find Your Throne. But I also think that song is a lot more catchier as well. Mm-hmm. But like uh, the- Gar. Go- yeah, you, you can go first, actually. Was, like, one of the best things about Caught in the Moment is that there's that whole middle section where he's like, hey man, you tried your best, but it wasn't that great, and you know what? No one fucking cares. <laughs> anyway, take me back to your house, watching Pokemon with you at 3 in the morning. One of the best moments on the entire album comes right after yeah. that. Like, fuck it. Anyway. And back the to fucking this guitars the guitars that happen, that happen in that fucking song as well. So like, that's crazy. like where the, like, the, like, it becomes really anthemic for a second, and like, the, everyone is just singing along, and it's Oh, it's such a good moment. I would love to see that live. But there like... are also, one of the other things I want to actually praise about this album as well, and it's kind of kind of going to having to hear fucking mainstream radio every time I'm um, in the car with my girlfriend because she drives, so she gets to control the radio. And Ooh. do you know how many goddamn mainstream pop songs there are about there where it's always about someone's feeling down or in, they're in a shitty situation, and the fucking resolution is to goddamn get in a relationship with the singer? Yeah. So goddamn many. Origami Angel don't ever do that on here. There's no it's just stay with me or stuff like that. It's kind of this whole like I can understand if you have to back off kind of shit. Yeah. No you never goes like it goes to this person and it talks about how like everyone's kind of bullying them or like in a shitty situation, but it's like it it never goes into a whole if you're with me, everything's better. It, it it's that's what I really praise about this album. It doesn't try to make this person a hero that they're not when they want people to feel better. Right. It's just being on- honest and open saying, like, hey, you're actually a cool person kind of shit. Doesn't fake any of this shit. Yeah. Doesn't, Everyone else doesn't is put out that fucking Doesn't put out this fucking toxic kind of answers that every fucking mainstream pop song seems to... I mean, not every, but yeah. so many seem to have. And that's that's like... I know when you kind of mostly listen to the stuff, you don't realize it, but like, it's actually really refreshing to have this view which is just in no way manipulative it's just pure honest and this this is an album of friendship yes and it's done it perfectly it it can spread love but it doesn't have to force a relationship to be love it doesn't have to force anything to be love it's just pure platonic like friend friendship love and that's what it, makes yeah. it sound it's not even about like oh i want to fuck you i want to do this i want to do that no it's like and i it, think it, you're it's cool not, it's not like 
uh, Origami Angel haven't put out songs about relationships and stuff like that. Sure. It's not like they can't do that. But yeah. it's, but like, when like Bossa Nova they Core is kind be, of a low don't. song. Yeah. But when they shouldn't be doing it, they don't. And that's what makes them good. Yeah. Yeah. And their willingness just to explore different genres, like Bossa Nova Core is just, it's mm-hmm. Bossa Nova, and then they go into, like, more hardcore. <laughs> like, literally, that's it. And it's fantastic. It, like, <laughs> just going into that whole that, Bossa Nova that's... beginning is just so unexpected. And he sings over it to the speed of the drum, not even the guitar. And it, it just mm-hmm. works so well somehow. The, yeah. it, that going into hardcore, and this is something that's like been good to um to know him since Gen Three as well, because the Gen Three EP was also good because they were actually starting to experiment, going a lot more heavy as well with um XD Gale of Darkness having a, a bit more screaming, faster pace in it, and they're starting to use all this quite well. Mm-hmm. I I still think whilst I still think yeah. Summer City is the better album, I don't think this is the peak for them. Oh I no, think, God! I think they're just gonna no. keep going. I hope so. And that's that's what I fucking love yeah. about Like I'm just like I'm just like thinking about all these different moments where I could just probably insert myself back into the album and just listen to it all the way through. Like put me at like Photos Cannonball Brothers, put me at Neutrogena Spectre, put me at Know You, put me at like Caught in the Moment. Like I will listen to that the rest of that shit all the way through. Like, even no offense. I, I also mm-hmm. want to talk about like just coming into because uh, a lot of this also has like some references kind of just to their popularity and the Garmin gang in there. And uh, isopropyl, propyl, I don't know how to pronounce it, alchemy. That fucking beginning where it just has this kind of like dark rolling guitars kind mm-hmm. of and then just kind of does this build up and then the drop is motherfucking Garmin gang. Yeah, and then it's just yes, a lot of instrumentals. It's funny, but it's it, it just. Like, it's something that, it's so kind of unexpected the first time, but it's just, like, yeah. Like, this is this is one of the few yeah. bands that can get away with it. Yeah, like, you characterize, like... This is like, no, by any means, a, a perfect album. Definitely. But fuck, they do some some good moments on here. Well, you characterize, like, okay, that, that trap beat that trap beat at the beginning is kind of silly that they go into, like, an emo song right after that, or it's mm. the, the old motherfucking Gami gang is, like, the, is like the drop is kind of fun and silly, sure. But mm. those moments also actually work beyond just, like, dumb comedy. Mm. Yeah. Like, it actually somehow still hits you as being like, that's actually really cool. Like, that that actually works somehow. Like, my brother hasn't listened to this full album, but I, I played just the opening <laughs> opening for him, and even he laughed at it and thought, oh, yeah, that's pretty fun. It's just, it's just, it's memorable moments, and it doesn't leave a bad taste, so that makes it good. It's a hard to explain kind of like yeah. more in depth than that. But if it's memorable and it's not memorable in a bad way, it's good. There's no memorable in an average way. Nothing's nothing's ever mem- uh, memorable in an average way. I can I can remember this kind of one uh teacher. Uh it was this kind of like I forget what the kind of fucking thing that it was based off was. But he was kind of just talking about like what makes uh things memorable and stuff and um it was it was to use for like essay writing and stuff like that, but it's if you if you do something completely unexpected but like mm-hmm. like it's very out there and you can actually mm-hmm. notice it you'll remember it and yeah. what this teacher did was he literally um he got all the pieces of paper and and just out of nowhere just threw them up at the fan saying I'm going crazy and ran out the door. Yeah, I had teachers and that did then that. He, then he comes, yeah, and he comes back, and it's, it's not the only one who's done it. There's people who jumped out the window and stuff as a joke and done like that as well. But he again goes mm-hmm. and explains like this is why I done that because you can uh, hear hear that because you don't remember stuff that is average, right? You even remember yeah. stuff that, like that's so bad it's memorable, or it's so good it's memorable. So if you if you can remember it, especially after a while from being from there, mm-hmm. and you don't hate it, you remember it because it's good. Like you, you're surprised that I would consider this one of the top albums that we've listened to this year, and it's normally me just trying to figure out is it is it my favorite one? Is it top three? And like the the parameters that I'm using for this is just like this album flows so well. I don't think there's like a least favorite moment for me. I don't think there's a part where I would not like turn I would turn it off or change the song if I were to start listening to it. You know, I you could... can you can definitely go on. I think look, I think I think this album does absolutely peak at New Surgery and Spectre. The um. It, it's just I don't know that's just a song that's just really really fucking fun you yeah. talk about anthemic 
there's definitely that anthemic moment, obviously, when it gets the, the claps and goes, woo, and then you hear the fucking claps, and you kind of feel like clapping along, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. But, the, but to me, that's that whole section of, like, that, Greenbelt Station, and Boston Nova Corps, that's probably, like, the, the highest peak of the entire thing. But, mm-hmm. like, listening to this is such a distinct, it will be a distinct memory for me now, in the same way that listening to In the Airplane Over the Sea was a distinct memory for me, I'm just, like, having this just complete experience happen, and it's just, everything about it flows so, so well. Nothing about it feels too off the beaten path with it. It all flows in a very specific way. And it's just like this. There's no bad parts to this, to me at least. It's it has that same feel of like I really love in the airplane over the sea, and this reminded me of that in terms of just my God. It's it just it hits the entire thing hits. It's 50 minutes and it hits. Uh, Tom Holland Oates as well has this kind of moment of um, like the chorus mostly is uh, close my eyes and count to ten, and then at mm-hmm. the end. Where they kind of actually just like whisper it, and then they sort of like kind of break down when they start screaming at the towards the end of it. Again, those are just those other moments on here. With like this, this has a fine line of being really fucking cheesy in a bad way, but they have just so much confidence and actual so much legitimacy to mm-hmm. everything that they're doing that it just doesn't feel that way. Like I listened to and they Paranol. translate it well. I listened to Mongwai. I listened to Paranol, and I really enjoy those albums as well. But my my enjoyment, at least at least at this point in the year, is more reserved for certain songs. I'm not listening to those albums in full as much anymore. And uh, musically, I think mm-hmm. those albums are perhaps still more impressive in terms of like what Paranol is doing, all the stuff that Mongwai is doing is maybe more <clears throat> impressive musically, but. I'm just listening to Richie Sacramento. I'm just listening to um to the Bin My Friends, you know. To I'm just listening to Beautiful World. Tonight we we vacate Earth. Right. I'm not listening to those albums in full necessarily anymore, where I could definitely listen to this in full. Mm. And I will continue to listen to it in full here and there, like in the aeroplane over the sea, where that's kind of the defining line to me is like I enjoy all these albums. I think those two are perhaps more impressive musically. But this is the one that has all the bangers front to back. Uh, there are, this is an album when it comes into a case study and a flow. I hope people use this as an example. Will it hold up? I, I don't know. It, it's very like modern. It's very in the now. It's very like relying on references that we get because we're in our 20s. Mm. Yeah. So maybe it won't have the timeless quality like, uh, uh, like a Mogwai will have or something like that. But for what it is right now, it's incredible. Yeah, like, I'm just like like all the like like, like when I was, when I was li- like listening to this 15 times or whatever, kind of learning the different songs. It's like okay, was it what is it about this song that I'm gonna remember? What is it about this song that I'm gonna remember? And I'm like, like Mock Bike has a whole like chorus about you know trying to sleep and like in the morning we'll feel all right, you know that kind of whole thing. Where that that to me is really memorable because it's like like holding those longer notes and kind of where he's really exploring his voice at that point, and everything just sounds so crisp and so clear. He's not faltering for a second on any of those notes. There's like one moment on the entire album where it feels like he's um faltering in his voice at all, and I think that's the end of um know you, I think, where he's getting into that screamo, but it's not as like maybe expressive or as like cleanly pitched to something in like uh um what is it fuck at the end of a uh, Neutrogena Spectre. And like Neutrogena Spectre too, that the whole screamo section that is really cool because it's like this whole song about self acceptance and love and how, you know, I could be a movie star, but I'm good. It doesn't it's, really it's, matter it's to this me. So it's this song that's kind of like about accepting your body image. Which but is but like, that whole screamo section then is kind of that yeah. underlying anxiety of like, does it really matter? Mm-hmm. You know, is is there like a little bit that yeah. actually still cares about that? Mm. He's trying to like convince himself and repeat it over and over. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. But getting more intense like that for that last part is kind of like that mantra of like, I I need to mm. believe this. I need to believe this. Now I want to deviate from this for a little bit to just remind everybody of something. Uh, I'm looking right now of, this was posted roughly two months ago, mm-hmm. nearly to the date, of, uh, Dominic's top ten. It doesn't really have, I, I'm guessing it's an order here, 
in but the, in the ranking section, yeah. Yeah. If is that still is was that still valid before this episode? Yes. Because okay, in that case, uh with this, eight out of ten albums in your top ten would have been chosen by me. This is correct. You are, so you are I correct. have been I have been Dominic's uh, best best friend for music this year, apparently. Yeah. You know how to uh, really there are, there's there's only two that are going to be uh in there that weren't. One was picked by Dominic himself with Left at London. And two the other one me. was uh well, I picked Driver. A, yeah, but that's gonna not uh, fall out. Right. Oh fair enough, yes. Yeah, and the other one is uh Shaky Graves, which is Trix's pick. Yeah. And then top four are all gonna be me. <laughs> And then it's home is where and Sly Withers, and then it's you, and then it's Genesis Harusu, and because I picked for Tea League. And the yeah. Tea League might switch that's... Genesis Harusu maybe at some point, but beyond that, that's pretty. That's pretty accurate. I, uh, it's, I, I, I don't think this. Like I went into this year wanting to pick a lot more 2021 albums, so I know I definitely have a larger pool, but I, I didn't think I was going to be that top heavy. Still, pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. I feel I feel like there's uh there's definitely been a lot more artists that have come out from this year which are gonna be a lot more law heavy. I know Petite League was pretty uh law heavy for us. Now Home is Where is pretty much a I mm-hmm. Home is Where we've only covered like eighteen minutes of and I think it was almost cemented as a law fan now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we're coming back to Roost with like Montero's I, coming out yeah. soon, uh Aubrey's I, album's I've, coming out soon. I gotta say, like, though, Homeless Wear has to be, like, the shortest amount of time that um, we've actually had covering an artist, like, listening to them. Uh, that's become law. And I think that's gonna, like, halt for a bit. Yes. Because Aubrey's, you have to count Calpurnia as well. And, like, mm-hmm. l- like listening to those, we enjoyed those well enough, but that wasn't, like, oh my god, lore. It's just, like, okay, we're gonna cover these because I thought they were interesting. Yeah. Kind of prepare for what's coming next. Like the the big lore the big lore moment's gonna be when Aiden Alexander finally drops that fucking album. And when oh, that's go gonna back, be lore for yeah. you. I don't. I'm not excited for that at all. I thought it was his demo was boring as batshit. We we agree that it was better than Troy Sivan's EP. I remember that. Oh yeah, I did. But Troy Sivan's EP was like boring as well. Yeah. But just having that uh, moment back to like episode fucking like four. That was two. No, it was like four. It was not two. Two was um Devin gotcha. Townsend um Diarrhea gotcha. Planet Last Dinosaurs. No, uh, right. it was like episode four. Yeah. Going back into topic now though, does anyone mm-hmm. have uh, any any anything more important that they want to talk about Origami Angels Gami Gang? Or I'm gonna assume uh, tricks is will have two words. Uh album good there it is. Yeah. Album great. I love the, the pun titles. Oof. <laughs> oh yeah, the titles, the titles are Midwest emo titles and the best. Nothing to do with the actual yeah, songs usually. Very but... pun heavy. Yes. Mm. Caught in a moment is like really the only ones that's not really on, and you could probably even say it's a pun because they talk about Pokemon a lot. Yeah. Gotta catch them all. Yeah. Ow. Tom Holland notes is a is a fantastic fucking title. That that is a fantastic one. And, and that I... song is great as well. Uh, no offense uh, is obviously a good one, being a pun on no offense. I mean, Bossa Nova Core is is just fun, a fun idea, and then it just is completely that. Although, uh, that Bass this... and Batman Beyond. I opened this CD. Uh, I believe it was like it might have been my brother's or something uh, birthday, and we went. Uh, I I went over to a restaurant with them and they, they gave uh, my mum gave me my mail and there's this fried chicken place called Gami, uh, Gami Chicken uh-huh. and when when I uh, when I showed her what the CD was it's like oh, it's just, it's like, oh is this about chicken and she looked at the song titles Mobius Chicken Strip and it's like oh yeah it is excellent that's pretty great accidentally <laughs> making the meme work <laughs> yeah. and I was just like I can't argue with that now uh, Bed Bath and Batman Beyond just that's a classic. Fucking amazing. And like, yeah, you're uh, the Pokemon titles, they got just Mach Bike. Mm. Yeah. And this isn't and necessarily mean, a pun, but it's just like, they got Gen 3 EP, and now here we are with more Gen 3 shit. 
New Tajrina Spectre is not only one of the best songs of this album, like the best song of this album, but it's also one of the best titles on here as well. I would say I would say my favorite is Tom Holland, I'd say. Yes. Uh I'm going to agree with Dominic whilst like whilst I said I haven't enjoyed this much as Somewhere City. The reason for that isn't because I think uh like this album isn't perfect. I think there are a, a, a little bits of moments on there which like drag and it, they haven't done perfectly and like some of the samples do well some of the samples on here get a little bit too meme mm-hmm. uh gg i think stretches out for a bit longer than it needs to as well mm-hmm. uh which is kind of funny because gami gang you'd think i'd uh, hate the most but it doesn't uh, like doesn't last that long but another another one of the main reasons like if you ask me to give this album score i give it a nine yeah, so i think it, i've like a nine to like a 9.5 i don't I don't know. It's one of those ones where I just don't feel like it's a ten. It's hard to explain why I don't no, feel like it's a ten. Th- that's why I'm like I, I, I don't. I don't know if I feel like it is album of the year necessarily, but by all yeah. metrics, by everything I I am, by everything I like, it should be my album of the year. So I'm I'm very conflicted on that. And it's the same with Somewhere City as well. Like I'd probably give them both similar uh, scores. I wouldn't give either of them a ten. I think I think maybe they're probably both a nine. But I, I feel like Somewhere of... City's peaks. Are also a lot higher as well. I just can't think of anywhere they can really improve it. <laughs> mm. Like maybe they can cut down Gigi a bit. Maybe maybe they can take out a sample or two. Maybe, but I feel like that's just kind of like. And it's 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 also kind of like it's kind of like the feeling of what I give a ten. It's like ten is also like an absolute fucking classic to me. Yeah, I think this might be for me. I don't know. You. you like the, this is not an album, which is a shame to give a ten. I'll give you that. Feel, like, feel what all... you gotta give it right now. I'm gonna say a ten. Fair enough. Like I, I, mean, I can, I can nitpick in the airplane over the sea of like you know maybe Untitled should be shorter. You know maybe you know Communist Daughter could have something happen to. It. I don't know. I don't really care. I I will say as well it when I first listened to Somewhere City. I I would have given it an 8 and that's moved to like a 9.5 for me. At at this point if I'm giving it a 9 who who knows where I I I view it in, in two years. I could even think that maybe the nostalgia was a bit too heavy reliance, which is again somewhat of the, of the complaint that I have here. I think they do it well, but I feel like it's something that's going to stop it from being a classic. But if it holds sure. up well in two years, then maybe this is something that I um end up turning into uh, in, into like a ten out of ten. I'd, it's not there for me, and it's like it's also it's also albums like Mogwai, Black Country, New Road, and stuff. I also don't quite consider tens, and I consider them better than this. So it's weird. To, it'd be weird to give this a ten. Yeah. I guess it's just kind of weird. That... It's this weird moment. I mean, ranking yeah. is all like it's number scores anyway, and in the end, I'm just gonna rank them how I rank them. Mm-hmm. The most important thing is that I like this album. Yes. Like again, like I don't, I don't know that many albums or like songs even that I would point to and be like, this is a good example of a, of a positive, feel good song that's about self acceptance and love. Like the themes that they're expressing are just handled super, super well in a way that a lot of albums fail to do. Mm. Like sitting on it for a while and like digesting it more over time is going to be definitely helpful. But I do feel like this album does things that not a lot of albums still do. Mm-hmm. And like you have the great moments of like caught in the moment, mm. even that has like a really cool positive like love yourself section. Mm. But like I'm I'm, I'm gonna be giving no least favorites on this album by the way because every nope. song is still no least favorites. If I had to pick one, maybe slash yeah. trust, but even then, there's a lot of cool stuff on slash trust that I like. Uh caught in a moment, Neutrogena Spectre, uh, self destruct, absolute favorites. I like Tom Hollow Notes as well as the song. Uh, I would say the only one, which is still a good song, so it's not a least favorite. I'd say I'd say if you had to give me an absolute one, Footloose Cannonball Brothers took me a while to mork it into. Mm-hmm. I don't consider it a least favorite. It is not. But that was the song that took the longest to get into, I reckon. For me, the highlights are Neutrogena Spectre, Green Belt Station, Bossa Nova Core. That whole section is so fucking great. 
and then caught in the moment, of course. And I think football's Cannonball Brothers is so fucking cool. Like that, 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 that's, that chorus is so hooky. Love it. Yeah, I'll give I'll, I'll give it that, which is why it's mm-hmm. not a least favorite for me. The um, and then you're yeah. acting like you're sponsored by Adidas. Yes. Uh, but bowling like you never mm-hmm. made the team. Okay, then no offense in the mic, but it's so cool. Fucking messing out of sight. I can't do emo. Emo is really I'm making good. a comeback, and it's like there's there's two there's two kind of like waves of emo making a comeback. There's the more popular variety that's happening with like fucking Olivia Rodrigo and I mean Machine Gun Kelly starting to go into it as well. And then there's the kind of like Midwestern kind of comeback as well. So been a been a good year for emo. Yeah. Yeah. And Shall we go tricks. into um, all tricks? Favorites. Oh yeah, tricks. Favorites. Sorry. Well, tri- tricks um, always like fuck up with that. So I keep forgetting. The fa- favorite is uh, Neutrogena Spectre, and I don't have a least favorite. All right, so we're going to the even more uh, feel sad for yourself type vibe than Emer. Let's talk about Through the Soil, the album that I actually annotated and fucking went through, wrote pages upon pages of fucking notes about all these fucking artists. We're not going to get to any of it, but I just love that I was able to actually accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. I mean, we can get through it. We've got as much time as we want. Uh, yeah. Now, Tricks, I tracks. hope I'm I hope I'm not the only one who was doing this when you saw the underground artist that you liked and like, fuck yeah, you're on here and you're fucking cheering like a sports team. <laughs> yeah. Doing that so much of Mouse Satori. Because <laughs> like... Yeah, I... Well, when I got to Mouse Satori, I'm like, oh, this is really good. Oh, it's Mouse Satori, that's why. <laughs> it's then, like, yeah. it's one of those artists that were like, you... Like... It feels just so weird for them to be on here with with some of the other artists that are on here, like Weather Day, Spirit of the Beehive, Julie mm-hmm. Dorian, Horse Jumper, all so much mass more massive than them, and they're just there, and they like they're there next to uh, to Weather Day, and they're both fantastic songs. Like I like Radar Ballet. My favorite on here is the Malsaturi song. Oh, my favorite on here is Radar Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, they're like, I'm, like, I'm actually, gonna assume your second favorite is Song for Growth Part Two. Um, no, Song oh, for Growth Part Two is good. I like it. It did not, it did not break yeah. my top fifteen, perhaps, but it's good. I feel like the I'm so much more of a fan of the openings uh, to this album or this compilation. That's not to say that uh, it gets bad anywhere. I think, I think well, it's a compilation, so of different artists, it's gonna be uh, a mix and match everywhere, but. Every artist here seems to actually have cared about the product that they put out. Yes. Even if some of them yeah. are just random demos or other versions of stuff. Like the thing the thing I want to highlight here is that there's such a like a way like a wide range of artists that are some are pretty popular, like Sweet Trip coming back this year that were like an early nineties mm. group that just have had the resurgence happen and they're put a demo on here. Or uh mm. the cleaners from Venus is like this guy who's been around since like the seventies. And he's been like a very big yeah. DIY cassette guy in like England in his in his group, and they're putting a song on here. But then like you have uh, Hillview seventy three, which is literally like this uh, non-binary high schooler, mm. and it's yeah. just like there's and like you know they've only put out a handful of songs on like SoundCloud and stuff, and like like a demo EP or something like that on Bandcamp, and it's like how did they find these people? How did they choose? I I have no idea. You know, it occurs to me I probably should have messaged. I think it's Spencer was the one from Master Tory. Mm-hmm. Since I know his Discord username, probably should have just gone it's like, "Hey, you want know, you want to like help give some insight about how this is chosen?" And no, I didn't do that. And also, just like, so if you wonder who the most laziest on this podcast is, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally have like the line of contact yeah. right there. I'm going to bother. Yeah. And also, like just learning about like like how incestuous some of these groups are in terms of just sharing members or how like. Like, there's at least one person here who's actually on here, like, three or four times in different capacities. Like, Chrisman is, like, one of the early bands on there. They're featured on, like, a later song with Hovdy at the end. But then Chrisman also has this person called uh, Boone Petrolo in it. Boone Petrolo, also known as Tex Petrolo in another song, also known as Dead Sullivan on another song. Or it's like, like, it's like really, like, I was, it's like really mapping out very specific scenes because it's like, there's a lot of, like, DIY Philly people on here. There's a lot of, like, New York, obviously, because uh, the soil is based in Rochester, but. Yes. And then, then Mouse Satori. 
<laughs> yeah, the one Australian Matsutui, like the one person from Sweden, Weather Day, the one person from the UK, Cleaners from Venus. Is Matsutui actually the only Australian on here? Yes. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's, it's so, it's one of those ones that's like so weird. And that's why I was like kind of like cheering for them because it's just, just, it's like they're the underdog on this compilation. It really mm-hmm. does feel like that. Yeah. And then it's like kind of going into like, okay, like there was one artist, uh, VV Milney, that I really liked the song, but I could not find anything else really about them to save my fucking life. I couldn't find any names. I couldn't find anything beyond just what they put out. They are completely anonymous, pretty much. They could just be a singer songwriter. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Weather Day uh, lean back to Paranormal? In what way? Doesn't wasn't Paranormal inspired by a Weather Day album? Possibly. I mean, I, I would believe I would make sense. Come in was let like, me let me let me check year. that. And like, because... like it was very DIY. Like, I think Weather Day like just used their like headset mic to go to record a lot of their vocals and stuff. I'm not on the um, I'm not on the part where I search. Or maybe I'll I'll go search it up and get back to you. But I'm pretty sure on the Bandcamp, I think that Weather Day album might have actually <laughs> might have actually been there. You know? Or it's like I was, <clears throat> there's like one artist like Scruff Puppy, and you like you just start looking into Scruff Puppy. And then it's like, oh, they're they moved to LA and they're fucking doing an album with Phoebe Bridgers and it's due out in January. Okay, cool. Real yeah. big moves happening for them. <laughs> or then it's I, like you I definitely or like you have an artist like Bimpo or Blimpo or whatever that 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 one that's more of like PC amateurish music, like something you find in like a video game, and that's kind of cool. But then like, oh, they're not called that anymore. They're called something else. And then it's like, why are they called this now? And trying to dig deeper into like what like the name switches like teen suicide became like american pleasure club because the label didn't like teen suicide as a name but then they switched back to teen suicide because the, the label let them have the name again yeah teen suicides run for cover aren't they because i'm pretty sure i have one of their albums i think so yes uh let me check blah 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 i oh, don't have it on here apparently i thought i had um i thought i had one of their albums in here apparently not like they, looked, that was the one with like haunt me x3 sure don't um, have it on, teen, on here can't be fucked searching it up well teen suicide was <laughs> um which song did they do oh shit whilst uh dominic is thinking of that groceries there were definitely other oh, you talked about it on here yeah i searched up teen suicide without putting on the band <laughs> and i got the su- suicide hotline <laughs> Or like there was like a whole story I was looking into Flat Sound about how you know they uh, Flat Sound's like a solo project about a guy who became like agoraphobic and just has been in his house for most of the last ten years and has built this following out of that and just do, focusing on their music and everything and like the, all these stories that just kind of kind of popped up out of this were super fascinating to get into, just kind of like tracking how everything fits together. So I, I will say there was also. Specifically around the early um early moments of this album, a lot of kind of like surprise songs that I ended up enjoying. Be there, I was like the most microphone sounding song in the start of this when it had specifically around the outro where it had this kind of like slightly off key but like intentional guitar and like mm-hmm. kind of the piano sounded exactly like off uh like they were ripped from the glow part too. Yeah, there were there were acts like uh, Attica Basement and uh, what is the other one? Uh, is it, it's a wonderful, well, really like. a wonderful, where those artists Ooh. have been like pretty inactive recently over the last few years. Like a wonderful, good, good burp there, tricks by the way. Yes, thanks. <laughs> sorry, it tasted like Papa John's. <laughs> like I was looking into a wonderful, for example, and like a wonderful's Bandcamp just seems to be somebody who really appreciates their music, uploading it all for free because they don't want it to disappear from the Ethernet or from the internet, from the ether. Can I just say how weird it was I said, to have the doors closing, Spirit of the Fucking Beehive, uh, right after <laughs> that's uh that Hello Shark song. Like mm. this this album kind of uh it's a compilation obviously, so when we've had the flow of Gami Gang, it feels a bit a bit rough going into yeah. this, not gonna lie. Oh, absolutely. And Cricksand, which is this very casual kinda of like kind of almost sounds like a Kurt Vile song. Straight into one of the uh, more exciting experimental acts to come out this year. Uh, I don't know if Spirit of the Beehive isn't this year, but they're kind of blown up a bit again this year. 
Like like almost every almost every band on here mentioned Alex G as an influence, so we probably should cover Alex G at some point. Uh, I might throw in um House of Sugar at one point because that's a good album, and that's the only Alex G album I've ever heard in full. Oh, that's not true. It's the only one I was interested in full. But then it's like, okay, we have Julie Dorian, who's worked with Phil Elverum. We have Thanksgiving, who's Wolf Cruz, worked with Phil Elverum <laughs> on, like, microphone. Or they were on, I think, uh, yeah. Phil Elverum's label for a little while. Yeah, P.W. Elverum and Son. And then there's, like, a whole story about how they kind of had, like, a Jeff Mangum-esque mental breakdown and, like, moved to Hawaii. Now it's just kind of whatever. Uh, uh What is this? Like, kind of, like... Like, what's really just, like, the fun part of this album, and I've probably, like, mentioned this so many times, but it's just so cool to have this much variety and what is... It's kind of like this whole... It's not really a scene, but it is. It's like... Oh, yeah. It's a genre of kind of going into lo-fi, but... It's, it's a great North Star in terms of, like, who we can cover in the future, you know? Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think you've mentioned you've already wanted to do Spirit of the Beehive at some point, and I'm... Yes. I'm definitely down to do um, Entertainment Death because that's that's a very interesting album. Server is immersed. It's a very nice song. Like, I do want to cover Weather Day now. I think we should do Come In at some point, maybe. Even though, from what I've listened to Come In, I don't know if I like it as much as Radar Ballet, one song, but I'd still be interested in covering that. Or just like just looking more into like like the the like the, the cover arts for cleaners from Venus, for example. Some of those cover arts are fucking beautiful. Some of the best mm. illustrated work I've seen for any of these artists. No, I just want to um. Like, let me see if I can find one real quick. I want to just go back to Shilling and Mousaturi here. Fucking hell, this like this song, this song kind of like they've released it as a single. It seems to be this new direction, and hopefully, hopefully, it's a new album that they're putting out. But I just love this kind of like whole. I, I don't know what the proper way to explain it is, but it's just kind of uh, instrumentation that's happening with the Sims that it feels like I would be playing on Clone Hero right now. Easy it's enough. so oh, chaotic and intense, but it fits so well. And I love, I love how energetic this song is, despite the kind of like depressing low five vocals that's happening here. The outro is kind of like very. We use the word emphatic a lot tonight. Yeah. But it is, they are shouting around with each other. It's, it, I mean, it is my ha- highlight of this, but I feel like the two highlights of this album are right next to each other. Because <laughs> then it goes straight into fucking Radar Ballet, which, this has really been a night for emo. I'm just yes. like kind of, kind of realizing. Yeah. Like, it's actually DIY emo because uh, Gamma Game was mm. recorded and uh, was it Ryland's bedroom, I think? I believe so. Yeah. It would make, it would make sense. Like they just mm-hmm. they they did like it's a it's it's a bedroom it's a bedroom album and they mastered it to the point where it sounds like a fucking studio fucking production. Mm. But mm-hmm. what I like most about Song for Growth Part Two, it's it's compared to the length of a lot of songs on here, it's actually kind of short. But it does so much more than what a lot of the other songs of this compilation do. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Like it was definitely a song that I liked. Like, there was, like, a lot of the songs were good, generally, I felt. There was definitely a number I was, like, neutral on, like, this is fine. But there was only a few songs that I was, like, really kind of like, this is not good. Mm. I do not like it. Mm-hmm. Why is this here? And I'm glad I'm very thankful Fair for that. Fair enough. Like, so, that fucking uh, Fog Lake song is seven minutes long and it has no fucking reason to be. So, Dominic, with your, with your researching into this, what would you say is, uh, some of your highlights... In uh, researching, in terms of what? I don't know. What was the most interesting band that you uh, discovered from this when you were doing the re- research into it? Like, which one had the more interesting backstory, or like shit I was like look- that? Okay, yeah. Like, I was looking into like I, like a lot of the bands I was finding. It was very limited information. Very just kind of like most of us just like names, staffing. Like the only one I was really having to delve into, like, reactions to was, like, Wyatt Smith, who has the, like, the, the, the emoticon face one. Which is the, um, mm. kind of evil frown. Yeah. And, like, I could, the only mm. things I could find out about Wyatt Smith were, uh, debates about pronoun usage, whether it's they or she, and then not really finding anywhere that's really talking about that more directly, about, like, where is this coming from? Not really finding anything about, like, that the artist is saying themselves. 
And then there was talk about actually this person might be kind of problematic and racist. <laughs> and again, where is this oh. coming from? Where where is the where is the, where are the receipts kind of? And then also Maybe just Twitter? like. Maybe. I couldn't find a Twitter, really, that talked about it or anything. Yeah, but, like, Twitter is social media, and most social media are just garbage, so who knows. And then the other thing I found out was just, yeah. like, okay. Oh, so subscribe to us on, uh, on YouTube and yes. follow us on Twitter. Yeah. And the yeah. third thing, it was pretty much there, follow, it was just, follow like, my oh, shit post Twitter. Um, this person's just ripping off Alex G completely. That, those are the three things I, I saw about that person, and it's like, I guess that's what I have to work with. Right, right, Smith. We don't know what gender you are. You seem to be racist, and you ripped off other artists. You're on the compilation. Yeah, and it's like, what? Where did they? Where did that come from? Like, where? How did they? Again, how do these people get chosen? I would love, love to know. Or uh, if only, uh, if only I bothered to ask. I mean, they're not on Discord. Why don't you ask, and we can follow up next week? Because they're not on Discord much anyway. Or um. See, like the, the the amount of like uh queer artists was really interesting, especially a lot of like non-binary artists, like more than I, I guess more than I, I would have expected. Like I feel like there's probably a good like ten or fifteen, if not more. Yeah, which is cool. Again, it's like kind of just like you kind of spin the spin the wheel a little bit, trying to research these people and trying to figure out. Uh, so what Phil Elvrum can take a really it. good picture. Yeah, that that fire picture is really dope. I like it a lot. Hmm. Or there's uh there's Lily Konigsberg and Andrea Scavelli who do that song commercial for kissing, and like looking into Andrea Scavelli, it's like oh this is like the son of like a really prominent character actor who died, and I guess this this the son is just now like this film composer and is somehow featured on this Lily Konigsberg single and I don't know how I thought that single was pretty weak overall they're they're like a big pianist and I didn't really hear any piano in that song. Are they singing They're a long big penis. penis. They're a long, large penis. Yes. Thank you. We are now um, demonetized off YouTube. Like I, like I, yeah, I get I, demonetized if you're never monetized to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> never making money anyway. We can say whatever we want. Uh, taxation but, is theft. You know, every every thought that I had in here would just get us cancelled. So I'm just gonna shut my mouth. Fair enough. I, I just figured I'd go the joking libertarian way. Or there's like just like people and bands that just have such generic names that it's kind of like I have to like figure out which fucking one are you. Like there's an artist on here, Daniel Weaver. There's like five fucking Daniel Weavers. And it's like, yeah. okay, this is the one that has this specific SoundCloud, and that's really about it. The other ones are just more famous. Or there's like a band called A Country Western. Now, ironically, you'd go to like, okay, Nashville has a band called Country Westerns. So there's some confusion there. Tennessee and Pennsylvania aren't that far from each other. You'd feel like they they would coordinate and be like, okay, we have very similar names. Maybe one of us should change. And then they neither neither of them did. And then they kissed. Ooh. <laughs> or someone like Dandelion Hand. If they have like a whole art style going on. I don't know, but like I got like kind of furry vibes. Um, you know, they they play with like cry wank and stuff. Like, just like a lot of these bands either play with each other or were opening for, like, bigger bands. Dearly Sober is a Chicago band. They play with Beach Bunny. Beach Bunny yet again rears their head in our um, episodes. Just this big yeah. nexus of acts and bands. Dominic, just going through all the, uh, all the notes here. What's the next interesting? Come on, come on. There's going to be something interesting. Uh, this person won a ping pong game. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the amount of effort that you've gone into. This is 68 different bands to study. This is quite a lot yeah. of effort that you've gone into. It is very, very much appreciated. Well, there's like Little Wings is like a band that's on here that has just as much like history and like legitimacy in the in the in the DIY kind of scene as like a microphones because they they were around the same time getting started. So it's like I've never heard of Little Wings, obviously. So it's like kind of like researching that history of theirs, and okay, they're like a contemporary of Phil Elvrum, okay. Or like uh, there's a band here called Little Kid, and they're and like the the big uh, quote on their Twitter is that yes, Little Kid is a bad band name. Um, Imagine if Little Kid I mean, gets canceled. <laughs> I mean, we've had some intentionally bad bad names on this yes. uh, podcast before. I mean, Diarrhea Planet. Machine Gun Fallacio last week. Yeah. Like, uh, Little Kid's uh, website was very, like, 
Christian mythic tradition focused of like uh, sending prayers and like you just okay, like, send I, them I'm just, shit. I'm just putting out when you put out a website that I'm going to assume is the band title. Uh, most of the people searching up little kids to find your website are not going to be your fans. Little kid band, Toronto, <laughs> Ontario, Canada. Yeah, their website was just really weird to look at because it was all about their album Transfiguration Highway, and it's very like there's a lot of like mysticism and like if you like zodiac or like kind of like the occult shit that 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 shit's probably for you Ooh, i'll have to check it out because it, it's just like yeah send us a prayer you know uh tell us what you want to pray to i don't know what exactly what you're going on about here but uh okay fun fun compilation to to listen to but i'm not i'm not gonna listen to over three hours of music three and a half hours sorry of music uh for one thing each week no. This is like the caretaker again. Yes, this is this although is yeah, big, less, yeah. less haunting. Also, I think more yeah. useful for our podcast. Yeah. My goal here was to find a bunch of different artists that I wanted to explore more into the future, going into their discographies. Now, here, here's a here's a fun comparison. No Time to Die is have been announced as the longest Bond movie uh, out of all the Bond films, uh, and if you watch that in full you would still have 48 minutes left of this album. Huh. On the other side of that, you could listen to this album twice, and it would be longer than Caretaker. Yes. Yeah, but Caretaker is an album, so that's like... Actually, that's Caretaker like, well, you can technically to is like four different releases, four different movements. Okay. It became like a full project later. Six. Like six. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, I believe it was six. Like, this is the biggest single release we've ever done. Like, Caretaker, mm-hmm. you could go into, like, the, the installments. Yeah. I was also, like, I, I was surprising myself, but just, like, the the, uh, the acts and the songs I ended up really liking were kind of some of the more solo, piano, just people singing along with, like, a instrument kind of things instead of the more completed band tracks. Like, I thought Morgan Powers' uh, song, Way It Was, was really cool. I really liked Daniel we- like Daniel Weaver's song, Spiral was like maybe the, the the best example of like DIY singer songwriter kind of stuff that I think is like it's like the best example on this album. Like there was there was like the handful of songs that I did not like on this album I really did not like like that fucking pulsar song pulsar song uh, mountainside that's just a fucking mess of a song. It's just fucking contradictory tones flying at you. The whole fucking beat's messy. It's just so fucking annoying to listen to. Or, uh, Stalker 2006's facelift is so short and so just nothing. It's like, okay, uh, you wasted a minute and 16 seconds of my life. Uh, and then, like, having that Thanksgiving song at the end, uh, Ruby at 415, being like a live track was really interesting. And, like, having them sing the song and then also the singer just, like, just kind of was like, I fucked this part up. Let me just explain it to you. Their whole explanation of. Yeah growing up and not really giving a shit about people and then all of a sudden you kind of, once you're on your own you start actually giving a shit about people understanding that your actions have consequences and that, you know, if you throw a bottle in the street, you know, you might be affecting the bicyclist who rides down at the next morning and fucks up their tires and can't go get their food from the local co-op anymore and all that shit. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of great moments like that are just kind of like these self-contained, like oh, alright, you're, you okay. I can see why this is on here, why this is notable, why this is anything. And then you just have, like, that fucking Fog Lake song, one for the Catholic girls, that's fucking seven minutes long. And I guess it's more of a droning piece, which is intentional, but just just wasn't for me. Just was so repetitive and just not microphones, not anything like that that seemed empty or really giving a good reason why it had to be that long. Fair enough. Album interesting. Yeah. Now, did we all compare, like, compile, like, some of our favorites? Hopefully. I've I've literally said my two favorites. <laughs> I can, this is too I, big for I, me I, to give you a proper least favorite. Okay. I think the ones that we were very much uh, originally excited for when we first <sighs> discovered that this was a compilation, and we go like, "Oh, there's some stuff that we covered," because there's actually only two artists on here that we've covered a full album from. Yes. Uh, yeah. One of them at around, like, first year, I think, and then one of them at the start of this year. I uh, actually have an interesting anecdote about um, 
I actually kind of have an interesting anecdote about Horse Jumper of Love that I don't think I ever kind of got into. Yeah, but it was uh, about it was about when I was listening when I first brought it up in that podcast. Um, that was kind of, that was in part kind of like my dark my dark saga. I've kind of been calling it as weird as that sounds, but it was beginning of 2020 where I was like the most depressed I had really ever been. At the time, I wasn't living with uh, I was living with my grandfather. And um, I was having wicked eczema flare-ups. And so, like, I would listen to the Horse Jumper of Love album in the shower. And it would just, like, depress me to, like, a weird amount, but, like, in a good way. While I was just having eczema flare-ups from the hot shower. Yeah. And, like, it's not, like, it's not, it's it's not, like, a fun anecdote, but it's just, like, an interesting study on, like, where my head was at the time where I picked this album. Yeah, and then that's when we made the infamous uh, artwork for the episode. Yes. One of my favorite and, pictures uh, to of quote Ritz. Jeff, Yeah, and to quote Jeff Mangum, and uh, I was happy for about uh, five minutes, and then it went all back into the shitter. Yeah. Um, I did create a top ten. Number ten for me would be Dearly Somber's Windowsill. I thought that was a really cool kind of atmospheric kind of track. Uh, number nine is the Dandelion Hands uh, intro scrapped. I thought, again, that was a really actually a really interesting intro. Really kind of sold me on whatever album it was to like i would be interested in listening to more of that because i think what an intro should do if anything is at least give you a taste of what's to come kind of like intrigue you and that definitely did uh number eight i don't know if this is because i would just want to investigate more or just because i really enjoyed the song necessarily was uh vivi milney's on the pile i still like i said i could not figure out anything about this band other than just they had some releases and no names no any real information about them they're fucking anonymous Number seven would be Thanksgiving's Ruby at 4.15 Live. Thanksgiving seems like an interesting uh, act to go into in terms of just working with Alvarum, having their um, their whole career where, you know, this is someone who identifies as male, but then later called their band, uh, their their name is uh, Adrian Orange, and their band name was like Adrian Orange and her something. So I thought that, that, that gender play was really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Spirit of the Beehive, Doors Closing is number six. Good track. A lot of different parts. I liked that. Number five is Jordan Mason's Pharmacy piano version. Uh, again, really like kind of that singer-songwriter, just a piano, just a guitar and a person stuff. I thought the, the yeah. singing was really like evocative and really interesting. Similar with, well, I won't get there yet. Number four is The Cleaners from Venus, Black Water Boy. Really good folk tune, just like this older guy. Really killing it, showing everyone how it's done. Also, good interesting act to go into, considering like he's been around since the '70s, pretty much. He has a ton of albums to listen to. Very yeah. big in the DIY scene. Number three, then, kind of like Jordan Mason is Morgan Powers, the way it was. Very powerful singer, just the piano, just her. Great job. Number two is Daniel Lever's Spiral. Again, just a guitar and a guy. Uh, probably one of the more unknown acts in the entire thing, but very good. Very interesting. And the number one is Weather Day's mm-hmm. Radar Ballet, which fucking killed it the first time I listened to it, and it's just been mm. constantly on my mind since. It's definitely a highlight from this album. Yeah. And, and then bottom five, quickly, number five, Lee Konigsberg's and Andreas Cavelli's Commercial for Kissing. That song is just short and dumb. Number four, Stalker 2006's Facelift. Again, shorter, more of a waste of my time. Three is Bed Bugs, Different Kind of Lilies, where that song was really cool instrumentally but i felt like the singing really fucked it up and they did not sync together well at all just felt like very two mm-hmm. different like things coming together to make something that doesn't really taste good uh number two is fog lakes one for the catholic girls that song is way too fucking long fuck that song and number one is pulsar's mountainside which like i said is just a fucking mess of an album like holy sh- or a song a mess of a song almost unlistenable Mm-hmm. Say that I think like the opening, the first. We're gonna call it the first part because this is like just based on the cons- cassette sides. But the first fifteen songs, I like them all. That's fair. My, like the yeah. highlight overall um, was probably in like the twenties and thirties to me. I'll get. I have uh, like three songs I noted down, and it was just like Horse Jumper of Love, Masaturi, and uh, the Weather Day song. All right. Now, are we all universally agreed on our rankings? This is the week where uh, probably. I don't know how you could do it any other way. Dominic, you want to say the ranking and then we'll all say if we agree? All right. Number three, Oscar Lang. Yep. Number yep. two, Through the Soil. Yep. 
Number one, Yami Gang. Yep. Yep. All right, we're in agreement. Uh, Ritz has won yet again. This is your like hundredth well, win. Go collect your if prize. If this is if this was the Olympics, you would all be fucked, and you would have to go back to your countries as losers. Let's count how many pages I took of notes. This is probably one of the, the biggest note sections I've taken. <clears throat> I finished the whole notebook on this. Not. I, didn't, I think you I should. I think you should it, post but... it all on Twitter. To be honest, don't let it yeah. go to waste. I could. Post all your notes on Twitter. Go, uh, go, Dominic, go. Let me just make sure nothing problematic is in here. I think I'm good. No, no cock drawings. It's too dense for cock drawings. Oh, let's see. Oh, Morgan Powers played a, a concert with OK Cool this year. That's cool. She's also from Chicago. Yeah, that is pretty cool. OK pretty Cool. Yeah, getting OK Cool and Weekend Run Club mentioned on the podcast yet again. One excellent. Yeah. Hello, Mitchell. How you doing? Maybe we'll see you in October. Some of us. Maybe. All right. Should we talk about what's going on for next week? Oh, two weeks, actually, because uh, yeah. next week I'm going to Nashville. I'm taking a break from this podcast. Yeah. I, I'm going to Nashville too, but I'm not taking a break because there's no rest for the week, and I'm also unemployed, and I don't have anything else to do. And uh, there was absolutely no fucking way that I could carry this podcast by myself. You'd just be like me, just going. So what was in the news today? I'm bored, yeah, and then just just kind of crying halfway through because I'm unstable by myself because I don't know why I'm doing this, and then I just upload it, and then yeah. I am intrigued to hear what a what a tricks and reds podcast would be like. I'll probably just start. Uh, Shit talking you, getting rid of you, adding in our new co host, uh, Pete. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, I guess we'll find out, but uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do what we're doing next week yes. and, then, and then do what we're doing the week after. Okay. All right, can I go first? I've kind of been planning this for a while now, sure. like a couple months. Yeah. Okay, okay so I live in Indiana now. And uh, I figured it, would, it was time to pay homage to an Indiana artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to be doing John Cougar concentration camps uh, to uh, Niagara Falls. That's that's just the, I I don't know what's it called. Why what you wanted to go first when we could have had that name drop at the end? <laughs> what a <laughs> fucking name! Uh, what's yes. what's it called? John Cougar concentration camps till Niagara Falls. Till Niagara I don't Falls. Think that, it's not on Spotify, no. It's on. It's streaming on. It might just be an Australia thing. Yeah, I think it's an Australia thing. I we can get files. I'm. A, I'm gonna buy these albums and listen to them on the road. An eight-hour drive. That's a hell of a yeah. um, of a fucking name. Uh, yeah. I I promise now for next week that I I was gonna show how chip tune should actually be done, and this. This album's gonna go down, I reckon, as a, a classic of the tens when it comes to electronic music and EDM, uh, because they, it's 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 hard to to really properly explain outside of the chip tune part of it, but they just incorporate chip tune so fucking well, and if you've ever played a video game, uh, specifically Bit Trip, uh, runner, you you know exactly who I'm talking about. I am going to be covering Anamanaguchi's USA. Oh, damn. We're doing Anamanaguchi. All right. All right. Damn. Holy shit. Um, USA. Yeah. Okay. Which means, like Tricks, I decided to go with a little thematic thing since I'm going to Nashville and we're going to see Petite League. I have found a way to kind of combine those ideas to, to give us an act. And Tricks, you remember that um that video? That we saw really this year about the one guy talking about how much he loved Petite League. Like he was in his bedroom. No, I don't. Like he was in his bedroom. He it was kind of like a video that. essay. Okay. Just, just say just say yes. Oh, oh I, I, do, I do remember that. I do remember there that. There it is. There okay, it is. Liar, but okay. <laughs> no, anyway. I actually do. I remember now. Yeah. So that guy was in a band. He's in a band. Uh, they had a release last year. His band is named Raccoon Love. And the album is called Ballads of Adolescence. Ah. And he's based in Nashville. We will we will definitely see him at the concert. And we've covered yeah. Petite League, so I figure uh, let's let's still cover him. We might as well. We'll see him there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, shall we now go into what we're doing the week after that as well? Yes. And this is a part where I will go first for this one. 
since I'll have to send files for this one. The week okay. after this will be my Grand of Montreal finale, where we're doing Daughter of Cloud, their big B-side album, along with a bunch of other songs that I've kind of collected that are other like B-sides and oddities from 2004 to 2014, kind of the satanic panic in the attic to like just after Lousy with Sylvia and Briar era that we've pretty much covered, except for Sunlanded right. Twins. So I haven't, there's a Sunlanded Twins that we didn't cover, and I also have not included their Sunlanded Twins EP bonus that I'm, we're going to save that for another time. But there's Daughter of Cloud, there's the Satanic Covers EP, which is a few different tracks, and then there's a whole like um, list of other tracks that I'm going to send, because a lot of it's just kind of okay. weird rarities and like features and stuff that I think it'd be cool to listen to. So yeah, we're finishing up Montreal the week after. Be two hours. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go off the tricks, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a little vote here now, and it's gonna be a the only hint is that all of these uh, artists start with T, and uh, the number that you pick from one to three uh, is gonna be the alphabetical order that they're in. So uh, I'll, let, I'll let tricks pick first. T two. T two. Three. So you pick two and three. Do do you know what I usually do when I uh, when you do that? Go with one. What's what's that? I pick the one that you haven't chosen. So do you want to? Fair enough. You, you, you want to um, you want to go with your pick first here, tricks, because I'm about to piss off everyone. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, we're doing two. Two. We're doing uh, two. No. Okay. Sorry, it's too late. Fuck. I just realized what it could okay, be. Okay. Well. <laughs> the, well, the week after next, we're going to follow the smoke to the rift-filled land and drop out of life with bong in hand. That's right, we're doing Dope Smoker, finally. Ah, oh, this is going to be... This <laughs> is going to be a uh, a great week. Because are you ready to realize what the two albums that you have uh, missed out on are? Tism.winker.com. What are they? The first, the first one that you missed out on, number three, was Turnstile's Love Connection. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Glow On, sorry. I was, I was thinking of the, the EP thingy. It was uh, Turnstile's Glow On, which is this kind of emo electronic album. That would have been number three. Number two would have finally been a, uh, our first, first stray into Tropical Fuckstorm with uh, Deep oh. States. Oh, yeah. damn it. Do you realize what you've picked, Dominic? Are you ready to say it? Tism.wanker.com? Tones and I. Uh, you know damn well it's not that. Jones and I. I've I've decided now that I've picked too much good for Dominic, and I want to see us finally suffer. We are going to be doing what's probably one of the worst releases of this year. <laughs> God we damn go- it. We're going to be doing yes. Tones and I's welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> God damn it! You specifically said we were you were not going to pick that. I was, but you know what? I decided. I hate everyone. It's my fault for picking through the soil. <laughs> and with Dope Smoker, it's going to be a hard listen going into that if you don't like uh, that type of uh, music. So, oh boy, this is going to be, this is oh going to be a god. ride. <laughs> Prepare for an hour of the same riff. Well, not, not the same riff. I'm going to piss off some of you metal fans, but like a similar enough riff. It's variations on a theme. Okay, but well, Dominic like... liked microphones in 2020, so. Oh, yeah, I love microphones. Yeah. It's my favorite song, of, my favorite album of 2020. Yeah. But no, I, 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 I personally can't wait until we dive into this. I, I, I know I did say earlier I didn't plan it, but I always have this chaotic change of heart, which is known as. Yeah, I, I, I like chaos. I. Chaotic neutral. I, I and, uh, appreciate this more than you I, know. I, I, I've picked I've picked too much good this year, you know. Tricks, so also, third. Tricks, I owe you a dollar. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, you do. Uh, did Tricks bet that I'd eventually choose this? No. Uh, we made a bet you you choose Black Midi by this point. Well, <laughs> actually, I still I still have uh, I have I have some time left in the bet, so it could just be a wash. So maybe we'll see. Until then, though, uh, I have been Ritalin. You can uh, you can celebrate the final two oh, weeks that I'm on question, this podcast. Question. Uh, yep. uh, welcome to the Madhouse uh, Deluxe Edition or Regular Edition? Uh, regular Edition. I don't want to kill us all. Oh, so you don't want to listen to Dance Monkey. Got it. I'd... 
If I was going to do the deluxe edition, I would just make you listen to the EP, because that's all it is. It's just the yes, EP. I it's know. not actually not actually a deluxe, and I'm going to rant about this now. Fuck off with deluxes if nothing on it is... It, remixes and, like, B-sides and stuff like that is fine. Just re-releasing stuff that's already been released is not a deluxe edition. It's just lazy. Anyway, as, uh, as you can already tell, I'm going to hate it in two weeks, but that's the fun of this podcast. I have been Riddle, and you can catch me on our website, Riddle and for Kids at GitHub.io. I also have a YouTube channel that's in the description below. I also release stuff on Steam sometimes, and that's really only one time, and it's down there. Plus, I have some music which you can compare yourself to if you like it more than Tones and I. If, if you do, you're kidding yourself, though, because I'm shit. Well, um... I think it's only fair. Um, I don't know if Raccoon Love will get a lot of love for this podcast. I'll say that. It's going to be a f- fair, you know. fun two weeks. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like this is, this is yeah. where we're wrapping up to the climax of the year, where we're finally covering everything that we've been tiptoeing around the entire time. Mm. Through the yeah, soil, well, it's just the beginning. I to build you up into Dope Smoker. And so, I figured now's a good time to jump in. Hell yeah. All right. I'm Dominic. You can catch me online on Twitter at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I. Uh, I've, re- I've written for TiltingWindmillStudios.com in the past. I haven't written anything new recently, but it's all there if you want to read it. Uh, I'm on YouTube. It's not really important, though, so you don't really have to search me up. Uh, I also live in real life. If you ever come to Illinois, hit me up, I guess. We could talk. I don't know. Maybe we can go on a date. Who knows? Go get coffee. Yeah. If you're a guy and you're cute, Dominic wants your number. And over 18, please. <laughs> Preferably over well, that's, 21, that's, actually, but... Uh, yeah, that's Especially. usually a, give, a given, but unfortunately, yes, there are there are a lot of people who will uh, ignore those warnings, so only if you're above 21. Dominic's yes. not a criminal and, is probably the best way to describe that. Yes, uh, not a criminal. And just to, just to recap real quickly, uh, just uh, you go ahead and I'll recap after that. All right, uh, I've been Trix. Catch me on Twitter at procrastinate underscore. It's like procrastinating astronaut. But I don't underscore at the end of it. I also have a bot that just tweets a lot of piss jokes, so that'll be in the description, too. And, uh, yeah. All right, and just to recap, over the next two weeks, we're going to be listening to Raccoon Loves Ballads of Adolescence, John Cougar Concentration Camps Till Niagara Falls, Adamana Gucci's... Best, best band name. Just, yes. Just going to put that out. That's I, I've known about this band. I've been, I've been curious when we're going to cover them. Tricks but, has um... said it's so long, but this is... This is... This is a beautiful, beautiful name. Anamanaguchi's yes. USA. I love you, Trix. I love this love that's happening right here. And then the week after that, we're recovering Of Montreal's Daughter of Cloud, Satanic Covers EP, and a bunch of other songs that I've thrown together for everybody. Dope Smokers Sleep, and Tones and Eyes, welcome. Sleep's Dope Smoker. To... Fuck. Sleep's Dope Smoker. <laughs> Correcting that now in the uh, document. Uh, Montreal's Daughter of Cloud, Satanic Covers EP, and other songs, Sleeps, Dope Smoker, and Tones and Eyes, welcome to the Madhouse. This next two weeks will be interesting. I wish I you two luck. I have to put luck. in the love now, I, because in two weeks there's not going to be any left. I cannot wait to, to get the audio for that episode in Nashville and just listen to it all and just hear everyone unraveling. Fair enough. I will see y'all in two weeks. Then I will see Tricks in real life. We'll have a little bit. We might do a little yes. recording for that in, in, before. Yeah, you know. but um, maybe some video. Yeah, yeah. I, I've suggested that it'd be a video between Tricks and Dominic, and then just like that drawing of horse jumper of love uh, parody that we've done, just a cut out of that, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just green screen, kind of like poorly animated in the background, just kind of like right. bobbing we up can and do down. That. Yeah, I have the, I I have the animation budget for that. that. Anyway, it, and you, you always have to refer to me every time you're an IRL, and then it's eventually one random person will come up and say who you're talking to, and then you have to explain, and then after five seconds they stop caring. It will be the be the funniest, funniest moment. And no, we're yeah. we're gonna pay somebody to act like you're there. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, probably you'll, do a better job than me, to be honest. It'll be either Lorenzo or Cam Dickey of Raccoon Love. <laughs> we'll just pay them to be like, oh hey Ritz, how you doing? <laughs> Okay, but I feel like I feel like if you manage to get Lorenzo there, it stops becoming a whole. Oh, uh, let's let's make him Ritz. It's like oh fuck, I'm with with, with fucking Lorenzo. So yeah, although it would be a good meme. But uh, until until then, we'll see you all next time. See you all next time. Bye bye. See you all next time.